this is a project I'm doing for my English homework. Precinct. Around the 1980s, the National Endowment for the Arts, or the NEA, conducted a mandated survey on the state of art education. And they documented the current thinking, which was art education was superfluous and not, not a core curriculum and was not supportive to the development of critical thinking skills. In modern times, this thinking has gotten better, but our education is still regressing. In California, the amount of money spent on students is already below the national average, and that money is used for other programs. In a survey, it shows that our education in the 2008 compared to the 2016 has a slight decrease in quality, but money isn't the only issue, art education isn't being taught properly in most classes. Been dwindling since the 1970s. Although in present times art education is slowly making a comeback, the west coast still hasn't recovered. Despite the many benefits art can bring, art education in the west coast still remains as one of the worst educational programs throughout the nation. But with the resurgence of art education, many new benefits can be found as art has always been an integral part of our culture. But people just don't care about it right now because they don't know how to use it to its full potential. Schools, there isn't a single teacher that is solely dedicated to the arts. Because of this, most teachers use art as a way to keep students entertained when there is a period of dullness with nothing for them to do. This causes people to develop a bad mentality for the art. One artist, Steve Bartlett, showed people how to avoid that mindset through his way of teaching. To, to help people understand art, he would ask, what do you see in this picture? Bartlett wanted them to see that interpreting a painting de begins with the visual evidence. Bartlett wanted people to think critically about what the artist wanted them to see and not just rely on others telling them what art means. By teaching people using this method, people's broken understanding of art can be fixed. Improve the cognitive functions of people, as well as self-esteem, social skills, reduce and resolve conflicts and distress. In an article about the relationships between art and mental health, it states that there is evidence that an engagement of artistic activities, either as an observer or an initiator of one's own creative efforts, can enhance one's mood, emotion, and other psychological states as well as the impact on important psychological parameters. This effect allows for improved memory for dementia patients, allowing them to reconnect with the world. But not just dementia, art can also help with depression, anxiety, and cancer. Physical Health By practicing art forms, a person can improve their physical health as it can be a way to release stress, improve motor functions, increase brain activity, and reduce pain in the body. A research study from Michigan State University centered around art therapy found evidence of some physical benefits of art. Some of their findings showed that art therapy helped reduce pain, decrease symptoms of stress, and improve quality of life in adult cancer patients. It also improved the ability to deal with pain and other frightening symptoms in children with cancer and reduced stress and anxiety with, in children with asthma. Development of better observational skills In art, one needs good observational skills in order to properly depict the subject. Without it, it will be inaccurate and unrealistic, unless that's what your aim is. Even in unrealistic art, observational skills can still be developed. For example, in Van Gogh's Starry Night painting, he was able to depict a turbulent flow in the night sky. This kind of cosmic activity was undiscovered until the 2004 with the help of the Hubble telescope. Through art and his observational skills, Van Gogh was somehow able to see something that scientists failed to understand without the help of advanced technology. So let's talk about how it could be used to serve something else. Although it might not be immediate, art can be used to serve as a historical reminder. The most common form of art being used as a historical record were sculptures and paintings. 
In some areas, gold pillars were used to remember and protect someone, or it could be used to teach a lesson. For example, sphinxes were used to guard and protect the remains of pharaohs and their treasures, while paintings on the other hand were made to remember a past event, like Jean Paul Moreau's staff. And cave paintings, the most primitive form of art, were used to teach lessons and remember past events the cultures and beliefs of a civilization. It is because there was art that we have a record of the cultures and beliefs of the people of the past. One example of this is the Terracotta Army in China and the Villa of Mysteries in Pompeii. The Terracotta Army was a symbol of the first emperor in Chinese history and it represented his conquest and was built to accompany the first emperor into the afterlife for his protection. The Villa of Mysteries fresco, however, is believed to represent the beliefs of a cult. In the fresco, it depicts some people being flogged and some people dancing and playing music. Many scholars depict this as some sort of initiation in some Dionysus cult. Idea even without language. This is something we see every day in common items like instruction manuals. Even without any words, by following the image depicted on an instruction manual, it is easy to follow along with what you have to do to achieve your goal, be it assembling IKEA furniture to doing CPR. Another example of conveying idea through art is posters. In a poster, a lot of information can be given without using any words just by looking at the complete image. Using an image of a simple animal trap, for example, someone just needs to look at the picture and they could instantly see all the components and how the thing works. This is through politics. One way art, art was used in politics is when it was used to send a message. That message can be graffiti on a wall or it could be used as propaganda like in World War II when there was a great fear of communism. At that time, artists used art to demonetize the Russians and other communist parties by painting them in a bad image like painting them as a devil or Satan. Also, art can be used to represent an organization. The Black Panther Party is one of those organizations. Their logo became so iconic that its meaning still resonates with the people today. Vitalized by the creativity of an artist. When art and culture are intertwined in a community, it helps cities attract tourists, diversify talents, bring about innovation, and grow the economy. For example, an artist was famous for repairing buildings using colorful pieces of lego bricks as a replacement for cement and other building blocks. And in another city, an artist directly paints on buildings to make them more attractive to people, which make the community a lot more appealing. These works of art became famous on the internet and because of that, people travel from all over to see them. This caused more money from an influx of tourists and new people joining to diversify the community. Used to prosper so much more in the past, but with more money being funneled out of art programs every year, it is only a matter of time before art education slows to a halt. In some areas of California, the quality of art is already dwindling. In most schools, there are many teachers with an art degree, and without it, they mostly use art as something to supplement their teachings. And because of the poor art education, people don't know how to use art to its full potential. But with a proper art education, art can promote good mental health and good physical health, record history and culture through sculptor, sculpt Art can even help develop new skills and convey new ideas. It could be used in politics and can revitalize and improve a community.